The Pokemon Go Buddy update has finally arrived, the iPhone 7 has officially launched, and you can now buy the HTC Vive on Amazon. That's what I like. Hello and welcome back to the series that I do once a week where I talk about all of the things I find in the news that are science and gaming and tech and drones and VR and fun that I like. To get started, as I mentioned there in the intro, of course, the Pokemon Go Buddy update has officially gone live. I've been playing with my son for the last month or so, and we are both extraordinarily pumped to be able to have little buddies going along with us for all these super rare Pokemon that we do not have in our area or may not be available anywhere. Now we're actually able to get more candies for them and make more progress in the game. If you're playing the game yourself, there is a list of all the different Pokemon and how far you have to walk to get candies for them, but I'm not going to go too deep into that. That's not what this channel is about. However, a data mine into the game has revealed that apparently Pokemon Go may also be coming to Android Wear sometime down the line. It's coming to the Apple Watch, of course, hopefully later this year. And if I had to guess, it's probably going to come to Android Wear sometime around that time as well. So that'll probably definitely make me pull back out one of my Android Wear devices. Moving right along, though, as I mentioned, of course, the iPhone 7 has officially launched. I have one here in hand. If you'd like to see my unboxing of this, it's the previous video on the channel, so go check that out. But to go along with that, Apple officially released iOS version 10, so if you have any iDevice from the last several years, make sure to go ahead and try to update. It's actually been updated to 10.0.0.1 since the release. Just addresses a few issues that were had. So again, make sure to check for the update if you have an older device. If you have the iPhone 7 or 7 Plus, it should come with it already. Apple also released tvOS version 10. So again, if you have the Apple TV, make sure to check for updates on that one as well. But it says over on The Verge that it comes with improved Siri and a dark mode. I actually have not tried the Apple TV, so I don't know anything about the UI, but I'm a gigantic fan of dark mode in applications. I just, I don't like the really light UIs because it hurts my eyes, so dark mode is a plus. Adobe Lightroom was also updated on the mobile devices to support raw images on the iPhone. I actually have not had a chance to try that out yet, but I may have to do that, because so far the camera on this thing is extremely impressive. Moving on to some Google news though, supposedly the price of the upcoming Pixel XL was leaked, and according to the article over on Techno Buffalo, this could be Google's most expensive phone to this point. From a tweet by the managing editor of Android Police, he says that the Pixel XL is going to be $649, but he doesn't know if that's for 32 or 128 gigs of storage. If it's for the 128 gig, that's a little bit more reasonable. If it's for 32, that's, that's a little bit high. I am curious though, how many of you guys are planning to pick up either the Pixel or the Pixel XL whenever they release? Personally, I will probably be picking up the Pixel just because I love the Nexus devices, but I do prefer the smaller ones. So when the Nexus 5X and 6P came out, I, I got the 5X. Google has also unveiled a preview program for Google Cast. From an article over on Droid Life, if you've got a Chromecast, you can enter into this program to see sort of new features before Google officially pushes them out to everybody. But they want to make it clear it's not beta software, it's preview because that makes a giant difference. I will admit, I've only got the original Chromecast and I haven't been using it all that much lately because I have other devices that have cast built into them. So my TV and the shield and everything else like that has cast in it. So I still use it occasionally. I might see if I can enroll in that program myself. Moving right along though. If you've always wanted to run Android on your PC, the Android x86 project has been updated to Android 6.0 Marshmallow. It does take them a little while after the official OS releases for them to get that working on the PC. So it's a bit unfortunate because Nougat just released. That means it's like, let's start all over again. But still, again, if you've always wanted to run it on your laptop, your desktop, there's a way to do it now. Moving right along, there was a bit of a leak this week that turned into reality when Amazon accidentally leaked out that it was going to be releasing an updated version of the Echo Dot. I made a video about the original Echo Dot. It's earlier in the channel if you wanted to search for it on my channel. I've already gone ahead and pre-ordered the second generation. They have made it available since that leak happened, and they've made it available in several bundles. Basically, you can either buy a bunch of the Echo Dots at once, so either like six or 12 of them at a time, or you can buy the Dot in conjunction with a Bose SoundLink speaker, an Echo B smart thermostat, a Philips Hue starter kit, which is the one that I pre-ordered, or a TP-Link smart plug. All pretty decent options and all things that actually work in conjunction with Alexa, so very much looking forward to that. It's going to be releasing in the middle of October, around October 20th. But 50 bucks for the Amazon Echo Dot, that's a whole lot more reasonable in my opinion. I think I paid 89 for the Echo Dot previously, and a whole lot more than that for the original Echo, and we do use them a lot around here, so cannot wait to get another one in the house and white is now an available color for it, so I pre-ordered the white one. Moving on to a tiny bit of photography-related news. As some of you might know, I do a second channel where I do daily videos with my family, where I'm constantly capturing what we're doing, I'm talking about technology and stuff behind the scenes of these videos. 
So I'm always on the lookout for new and interesting cameras. Well, Canon just unveiled their newest mirrorless camera, the EOS M5, basically the update to the EOS M3 and M10 they'd released previously. The M3 that they released before had a flip up screen, which was really nice, except you couldn't use an external microphone with it at the same time. By the way, it had a mic jack. The M5 takes care of that by making the screen flip down, but flipping it down, you're, you're getting in the way of the tripod mount at that point. So if you wanna be able to use the camera on a tripod and also see yourself while you're filming, that it, it doesn't work. It would make much more sense if they flipped it out to the side, like the Panasonic Lumix G7 that I'm filming with right now, or any one of the other Canon DSLRs that do it. I'm guessing there's just space constraints and whatnot in the teeny tiny mirrorless camera. Still, if you're in the market for something like that, it's like $1,500 with a lens, about $1,000 for just the body. It's a little bit expensive. Might be a good time to look at the M3 though, because it, last time I looked at it, the price on that one is like $500 with a lens, so that might be a good option. And to wrap things up, let's talk about a little bit of drone and VR news. There was an article over on The Verge talking about a drone with claws. It's not exactly a consumer-ready thing or anything like that, and it never will be. This is from a Japanese company called Pro Drone, and it's got this really long name, but it can grab anything up to 44 pounds and take it away. So it could pick up a baby, or it could pick up a package and deliver it for you. That's the much more likely purpose, although I can say being able to hit a button and have a drone go pick up the baby from daycare would be interesting, but also, no, don't do that. And again, as I mentioned in the intro, the HTC Vive is now available for purchase on Amazon. I've been using and loving the HTC Vive. Unfortunately, have not been making videos about it. Might have to get back to doing that. But if you've been waiting to pick it up because you didn't want to wait to get it from HTC Direct, or maybe you've got a buttload of Amazon gift cards, now you can go check it out over there. I'll have a link to where you can find it down below. And finally, there was an article on The Verge talking about another VR game that's supposedly very interesting. It's called Drive Club VR. I've not actually experimented with any of the racing style games in VR, so I'm very much looking forward to checking this out. And actually the thing they don't really mention early on in the article is this is not an Oculus or an HTC Vive thing. This is apparently on the PlayStation VR, and it's an amazing experience. They say it's, here it is, I've played a fair few driving games on the Rift and the HTC Vive at home, but my experience with Drive Club VR at the Tokyo Game Show has been the best yet, meaning it's supposedly an excellent experience and it's running on PSVR. Unfortunately, I will not be able to play that on the Vive. Moving on. Actually, moving on to nothing. That's the last thing I got to talk about with you guys for today. So let me know if there's anything major that I missed down in the comment section below. I'm sure you guys will. Leave a thumbs up below if you like this video, if you like this style of video, if you want to keep seeing these. Subscribe to the channel to receive all of my videos when they become available. I do lots of different things. Product unboxings, camera samples, drones and RC cars, and just lots of different tech related things. And I have a lot of fun doing it. So subscribe to stay updated with what I'm up to. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time.